Cat Synth TV. Hey everybody, Cat Synth TV, and we finally have another installment of Adventures in Retro Computing. Today we're going to connect our Tandy 102 vintage laptop computer from the 1980s to the 21st century wireless internet. If you haven't already seen our introduction to the TRS Model 100 and Tandy M102, we suggest watching that first. Link is above and in the description below. We'll be using the serial to Wi-Fi adapter from the old net to bridge between the laptop serial or RS-232 communications port and our Wi-Fi network. We'll put a link to the old net store page in the description below. As you can see, it doesn't quite connect to the M102 on its own because the adapter has a 9-pin serial port and the laptop has a 25-pin serial port. We can use a serial port adapter to convert between DB9 and DB25. Connect that up, but it still won't connect. That's because both sides are female type serial ports. We'll add this gender changer between them, and now we can finally connect this unwieldy set of adapters. Okay, and with everything connected, let's boot up the M102 and go to Telcom, which allows us to communicate over the serial port. Zoom in here a bit. Right now, Telcom is set to talk to the built-in modem rather than the serial port. We can change this by issuing the following stack command. The 3 means we are running at 300 baud rate. The Wi-Fi adapter can technically run as high as 9600 or even 19200, but we're going to stick with 300 for this demo, as we know that works reliably with this laptop. We can press F4 to enter the terminal mode. Type AT question mark to bring up information about the Wi-Fi adapter, as well as various commands it supports. In addition to the standard dialing, it can support things like HTTP requests and even Gopher. Anyone out there remember Gopher? More commands? There's even an experimental feature to host a little file system on the adapter, but we're not going to demo that in this video. First thing we do is set the SSID to our Wi-Fi network. Hmm, probably would work better if I spelled it right. Okay, now the password. No peeking. Now we can type ATC0 to shut off the Wi-Fi, and then ATC1 to turn it back on with the new settings. All right, and we are connected. Now once the device is on the Wi-Fi network, you can use its web interface to do further configuration instead of terminal commands. We can change things like baud rate, set it higher like 2400 or even 9600 if you want to get wild. But again, we're going to stick to 300 for now. There's access to the built-in file system and some entries for speed dials. A bunch of them came with the adapter. We added a couple more of our own that we're going to visit today. Okay, we're now going to use the ATDT command to connect to the old Nets web proxy service. ATDT traditionally uses phone numbers, but here it's connecting to an internet address using the Telnet protocol. Okay, and we're in. Let's go to the CatSynth blog. Okay, we see some links for topic shortcuts that usually appear at the top of the page, some of our blog categories. Now our blog isn't really optimized for text-based web access, but it's something to think about adding. Let's find another website that's already optimized for text. For example, text.npr.org is a text-based version of NPR's main website. Okay, now we're going to get some news headlines. Well now, this is all quite depressing. Oh, this one about Death Valley looks cool though. Have to come back to that. If we zoom out, you can see the adapter flickering as it sends and receives data. Okay, now back before the internet, one could get online via BBSs or bulletin board systems. You could dial into a BBS using a modem and access forums, play games, share files, all sorts of stuff. Some of the old BBS services still remain online today, and you can telnet into them. We're going to visit an online BBS called thekeep.net. Although quite colorful here, it does support 40 character wide text mode, which is what we have on our M102, and it even has a lot of Model 100 games and other programs available for download. 
Plus, I have to give a shout out to the Sysop Greg for his support and patience as I work through the technical challenges of getting this demo set up. Please do give them a visit if you're interested in vintage computers and related technologies. We'll put a link in the description below. Let's connect to the keep.net. Okay, we're in. There are a few different modes. Let's go for option three for 40 column support. Now you'll see these funny characters in the middle of the text, like M32. These are ANSI escape sequences used for color and graphics changes. We'll have the opportunity to turn them off after we get through all the intro matter. Sign on with our user ID and password. All right, greetings, CatSynth. Some more announcements and such. Now we're at the main menu, though it's hard to read with all the ANSI escape sequences in it. Okay, we finally have a prompt. So we can type in equal sign A to turn off those pesky escape sequences. We can also use this command to ensure we're in 40 character mode. There, now the main menu is much more readable. Let's select option 2 to visit the forums. Now I thought it was pretty cool that they had a synth forum here. Let's see if there are any messages. Looks like there is one, and it's from me. So not much activity here, but if you do sign up for the keep, please do drop by this forum and or send me a message. Most activity on BBSs like this is probably in the game section. There are a whole lot of online games you can play, most of which aren't particularly suited to our small screen. I'm gonna skip the games for now and select three to go to the file library. Press S to select the library. We can see a list of them here. These ones that begin with 100 are specifically for the Model 100 laptops. I'm gonna select 100 games. Press F to look at the files, F again to get an alphabetical listing. Ooh, that adventure game looks cool, but I'm gonna actually select a different file. I know there is a Pong variant here, so we use W to select it by name. And now we have the option to download it. There are a bunch of different download protocols like X modem, Y modem, Z modem, but we're gonna use the ASCII continuous dump. First, press F2 on the laptop to start a download. Give it a file name, no extension. And now press A to start the file listing, which will be saved to the laptop. You can see the source code in the basic programming language scrolling by. Zoom out to see our Wi-Fi adapter at work. Okay, and once it's done, press F2 again to complete the download. And we're done. We'll come back to this program we downloaded a little bit later. There's a lot more to do here, but that's probably enough for now. Let's go back to the main menu and press G to log off. Do you have any favorite BBSs that still exist and that you'd like to go to? Please let us know in the comments below, and we might feature them in a future video. Okay, in this next example, we're going to be logging into a little text-based server that I'm running locally. It's based on the dial -Zine software created and maintained by my friend Kara Esten. We'll put the GitHub link in the description below. Now this server was built to host a zine called A New Session. It's a wonderful little retro zine that you can tell net into. We'll put that link in the description as well. But it does require an 80 character width, so we'll feature it in more detail in a future video. Instead, I used the software to create my own little zine of feline ASCII art, including several by an artist called JGS. Let's dial into our local server. Unfortunately, we have to use the IP address. We have it running on port 8085 instead of the usual 23 for Telnet. Okay, so one gotcha is that the enter key on the M102 sends carriage return, but our server is expecting new line characters. So we can instead type Control J to issue a new line. Okay, we're in. Again, because of the difference between carriage return and new line, our table of contents is a little weird, something that I can probably fix in the source code, but I did fix the cat art to include proper carriage returns, so we should be good to go. 
select one, press control J, and look, there's a little ASCII cat. Isn't that cute? Let's exit and try number three. This one's a little bit longer, so we can watch it scroll by. And let's do one more. Let's try number two. Very cute. Okay, let's hang up. Okay, let's go back and check out that Pong program that we downloaded earlier. Since it was saved with a DO extension, we can select it on the main laptop menu and go directly to the text editor. You'll see that there's a bit of schmutz at the top here from our download process. Let's remove that. Okay, scroll through the listing. We see the basic line numbers and statements. And a bit more schmutz at the bottom that we have to remove. Save the file. OK, exit text and go to basic. Load our pong.do file. List the program. It's amazing what you can do in only 70 lines of code. There are a few subroutines here. OK, let's run it. Player 1 ready? Hmm, I suppose so. And let the game begin. We can use these keys on the top row to move the paddle right and left. Hmm, this feels like something between a classical Pong game and a breakout style game. Well, this is kind of fun. Whoops. Okay, enough of that for now. If you have any thoughts or questions about anything we showed you today, please let us know in the comments below. To find out more about the Old Net and their serial Wi-Fi adapter, please visit their website and check out the description below this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Catsynth TV.